Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. A friendly viewer of the channel asked me a very good question. So his name is uh, Bokai, he's a young man and his uh, main watch is a Rolex Explorer 39mm which he wears every day. Perfect one watch as you know. And as I, t I told him, you're putting all your memories in that watch, I think it's fantastic. But he's a bit tickled by the idea of having uh, a dress watch uh, as well. And I wanted to unpack this and give my uh, general thoughts, um, which hopefully will apply to anybody, at, no matter what your budget is. So if I understand well, uh, Bokai is looking, for example, at the 6000G Patek Philippe. So that's a previous generation, uh, smaller size, I believe 36 millimeter. Uh, one of the entry level uh, Patek Philips. Uh, he's also looking at the GLC uh, Ultra Thin or the, the Master Control lines, uh, more more affordable, usually about a third of the the price of where you could get that uh, that Patek, and uh, also that's uh, that's a great idea. But he's just worried that um, he might not be able to use it as a daily wearer, uh, which is a very fair concern. And uh, since he knows I have a couple of Pateks uh, longer, uh, he, he wanted to, to know why I'm talking so much about sports watches uh, and not that much about my dress watches. Uh, well, one reason is that you can make a video about a, a $30,000 longer. There's hardly anybody who's going to watch it because most people want to hear about uh, sports, sports models. And, but it's not just about the, the the value of it, it's also about the wearability of it. And in a very general consideration, what is the best watch in the world? It is, is it a precious longer that you don't really dare wearing uh, when it's hot and humid outside? Or is it that explorer that Bokai wears every day? And, uh, you know, after a couple of years of, uh, of trial and errors with me, uh, and having amassed this collection, I can tell you the best watch is the one you can wear every day and at, at the same time brings you pleasure. So he, he's got a great base there with the Explorer. He also has a birth year Speedmaster on a, on a strap. And he mentions cheekily that uh, if he squints enough, he can imagine that he has a vintage Daytona on, on the wrist. I think uh, we all we all would love to have uh, picked up uh, Daytona much earlier in our in our life, and uh, yeah, we would be kings kings now. Uh, but that ship uh, has that ship has sailed. Uh, let's just look uh, look to the future. All right, so dress watches. The the main issue for for me, I can't wear them every day because I live in Hong Kong. So from the month of March, April is just extremely hot outside, very humid, and the straps are going to get damaged uh, very quickly. The other day I, I was caught outside at um, some event and spent a couple of hours drinking beer in a very humid weather and I had my uh, Patek 5134G on the wrist and when I came back home the strap, the leather strap, which has a very clear underside, almost uh, white was completely brown i freaked out so i kind of took out the humidity uh, with some uh, some paper and by the next day it was uh, it was okay you know you can replace those things um, but it, it goes beyond beyond the uh, the strap itself uh, the watches you know some pateks patek still uses for complications uh, dimples on the side of the case and some have been known to let some humidity through you know if you live in Singapore for example where it's very hot and humid all year long uh, at some point you risk damage to your dial or even worse to the movement so you you tend to to be very worried about those watches uh, when the weather is so hot also they are made usually of precious metal white gold uh, yellow gold uh, platinum gold is so easy to scratch the other day I was putting back my longer in my watch box and it, it kind of slipped um, out of my fingers, landed on uh, <laughs> on my Tudor Black Bay, uh, which fared much better than lo the longer. I can see the dents of um, 
the, the bezel of the Tudor into the white gold of the longer. My God, when that happens to you, it's just, um, it, it just hurts. But, you know, that, that watch had already a, a couple of tiny, uh, tiny marks when I bought it. So, yeah, uh, that's life. You will, I can, will get it polished when I get it serviced. And which brings me to um, an, an important point uh, in terms of uh, value. I don't know how much money uh, Bokai wants to put in, uh, in a dress watch, but uh, he says even a 6000G Patek, which is very much, which is the first interesting Patek you, you can get at the entry level. Below that is going to be boy size watches, uh, very old fashioned usually. So really the 6000 is where it gets interesting, the 5196, uh, those kinds of watches around 13,000 US dollar. You can find them used, which doesn't mean they're going to be in great condition uh, mechanically wise. So there's a, a risk there as well. So wh when you're getting at the, the lower uh, the lower end of the, those Pateks, um, do you get the full experience? Yeah, yes and no, because then you're going to think, oh, I'd love to have a complication. Uh, that's why I like my 5134, you know, it was its entry entry level, but at the same time, there's something a bit interesting happening to it. But what uh, the point I wanted to make about value is that I think to buy a watch like that, you're going to be able to buy 10 of them. And it's good for at every point of your journey in um, in watch collecting. Uh, if you can just afford, uh, say, the, the Seiko I have uh, on the wrist, uh, the SPB 151 that just came out, it's a thousand dollar. If that is a stretch for you, I, I would suggest you, you don't put your, your money there because if something bad happens, if there is a, an issue, if it was stolen, uh, broken, if, it, if it's going to break you financially, uh, best to um, ju just to look at something more more affordable. Uh, same for the the longer longer for me it, it's quite a stretch. You know, it, it's a big piece. It's thirty thousand dollar. It's the price of a of a nice uh, saloon. I could get an Audi S3 on the used market for for that kind of money. Um, if I lost it, it would be a nasty blow, but a blow that I could recover from. Uh, you know, I'm in my mid forties. Uh, a bit a bit more stable financially uh, but still it's not the kind of money I would want to to lose and sometimes I think about it I think maybe it's not uh, worth putting it there the reason I, I have it is that you know I live in a very safe city the watches are always in a very safe place I wear them in a safe environment and to me it's better to have them have those watches than have money in the safe uh, also the way I select the watch, I try to find a watch that I think will keep its value or be uh, will will uh, gain gain some value. So right now everybody wants sports watches. I'm thinking uh, a well-priced um, Patek Calatrava or uh, a longer, which isn't made in high numbers. Uh, on the second hand market come they come at a very good prices these days but you shouldn't rush into getting the model that you want at any cost you should just wait until one of the models make a selection of a few things that you like and uh, make sure you put some alerts in chrono 24 or on lo your local ads whatever apps uh, i'm using an app here in hong kong with alerts and if something uh, one of those watches comes at a great price just you, you you quickly snag it the other day i missed out on the annual calendar patek didn't really want to to buy it but the price was too good to be true and um it, it the, the watch was very very true and um and uh, it was gone straight away so sometimes dealers will price them to 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 go because otherwise you see those watches they don't it's, they're very difficult to sell so you have to be mindful of that you buy uh, a calatrava even if it's interesting to to you and to many people and you get kudos doesn't mean it's easy to uh, resell if you're not happy with the watch and then god forbid if you need a service you have to think about that those um you know the thing with dress watches it, it's a chance to get uh, a taste of high horology with uh, starting with uh, Jeugeur Le Coultre uh, and then moving on to the Calatrava of Patek or a Patrimony of uh, Vacheron and so, so it, it is very exciting, but with that comes much more responsibility. 
those are handcrafted pieces. They're not bulletproof mechanisms. Uh, even an AP Royal Oak is certainly not uh, as bulletproof as a, as a Rolex. And if something goes wrong, and it often goes wrong with AP, uh, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So you have to factor that in. And that's why I say you should have a budget of 10 times what you want uh, to, be, to be really on the safe side. Um, and unless, you know, maybe your parents wants to want to make you a beautiful gift, uh, that's going to be very exciting. You have that thing which is, uh, which is priceless to, to you beyond your, your usual uh, budget, but then you're going to have to really look after uh, very, very carefully. Um, so, yeah, um, doesn't have... What I was saying to Bokai, it, you don't have to go straight to the, the big gun, you know, ease into it. I think uh, we will understand that in this uh, watch collecting thing. You ease into, into it by uh, step by step. And uh, GLC is obviously a great way because they've provided movements to, uh, to Patek. You know, they were the one, you know, that producing the, 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 the movements uh, when Patek, Vacheron didn't want to uh, invest uh, in it. So they would gather with, uh, with GLC, decide what they want and just make one great base movement that everyone could use. And then they can refinish uh, up to their own standards or change. Uh, the balance wheel uh, and whatnot. So GLC has that respectability. It is the, manu the watchmaker's watchmaker for, for good reason. They do make the, the, the calibers and the master control line is, is just great. Uh, get one on the second hand mar market that if you can afford it, get a brand new one. I think it, it's not going to break anyone's budget. Uh, if it does, avoid it. But um, what's great about it is it's a bit more under the radar. You're not going to attract too much attention, but you have something really with great heritage uh, built in. And the master control stuff is going to be very accurate. So you're going to have a great experience with the watch. And you can go on the website of Chez Le Coultre to calculate how much service would, would cost. And in general, even for a complication, it's not uh, really, it's not, it's not crazy with, uh, with GLC. And... Um, the new master control line is great. The older ones are great as well. Uh, because as a new one, the older ones will come at an even greater price on the second-hand market. Don't get one too old because service, you know, it's going to add up to the price. So at least make sure that it's factored in, that maybe within two years you might need to send it uh, to, to Jezer. Avoid going to an independent watchmaker to fix a, a watch which has a complication. It's better to just give it one time to the uh, manufacturer to be to to be sure you get the, the the proper service just get peace of mind peace of mind is important with with watches you know if there's something clunky on the watch you will tend not to wear it so you gotta be careful don't go for the cheapest thing you can find um, get something from a, a good dealer or get something straight from the the shop try to get a discount um, but yeah peace of mind is important and you want to make sure that everything works that the date lines up uh, that uh, the power reserve is uh, is really there. That there's just no no issue. Um, so there again, don't go for the the lowest, the, the the cheapest. It's okay to go for the most affordable model from from Patek, for example. The six thousand G is a beautiful watch. It's a great watch. Uh, considered entry level. Uh, the new one, the six thousand six, uh, as well. Uh, but just make sure that you get one in uh, in good condition. Now, it doesn't have to be JLC, Patek. Eh? Dress watch is a dress watch. There's a dress watch for 50 bucks. Uh, Daniel Wellington makes uh, dress watches. Obviously, we hate it because it's uh, it's made in Chinese, uh, in, uh, made, made in China, at very affordable uh, prices. But, you know, at least you, you get the, the, the feel for it. Uh, but it doesn't have to be $50, $50 Daniel Wellington, of course. Um, every brand uh, makes some uh, Seiko makes some beautiful dress watches in the presage line uh, usually a bit too thick so I would rather find something uh, a bit thinner to give you that experience of the, the dress watch which is meant to be very thin uh, a lot more conservative uh, something that uh, only a keen eye will, will notice on, on you uh, to just to go back to GLC, a reversal, of course, it is a beautiful watch and so different and a great complement, for example, to 
uh, an Explorer, which is a uh, perfect everyday watch. Um, what else? Uh, Omega does some uh, dress watches. Every brand, you know, at very affordable levels, you have Orion, but that's not going to marry well with the with the Explorer. I think you have to aim at something of the the same the same level, um, and w which is why I think GLC is a is a good good first step. The problem is going to resale is going to be a bit more more difficult, and um, you want to make sure you get something that's a bit special. I think uh, if you don't have a big collection, make sure that every piece really matters really counts in the in the collection so you have a perfect explorer you have a nice speedmaster there uh chronograph uh yeah i think is the right move now to to get a dress watch now is it going to be an everyday piece uh, that was uh, the main question of uh, of bokai honestly i don't think so uh depends a bit where you live in a more temperate climate for example in the, in belgium or here in, even here, here in hong kong in the in the winter it's fine um, but uh, if you have a very active life, if you have kids already, you can't wear uh, a dress piece next to them because it's going to get trashed pretty pretty quickly. And um, uh, yeah, I think I would think a reverse or master control, maybe the the sector dial uh, that w is very nice. So I'll do check out the new master control and uh, see if uh, maybe on the gray market you could uh, pick up one up because they're, they're very nice, they're great upgrades with a longer power reserve. Because if you're gonna have start a little rotation between those two watches, uh, especially on the, on the weekend, it's nice to have those 70 hours of power reserve, especially if you go for complication like the moon phase or the, the, the full calendar. A calendar, trust you me, is a real pain in the back you sometimes you know it's it's attractive to have the full calendar it's romantic to have the moon phase but if you don't wear them they're just horrible to to reset and that's why my longer is so amazing with that side pusher but it comes at a at a great price uh in general maybe simpler is better i would just say a model with a with a date oh, if you don't like date dates then it's even easier just take a time only and um and, and off you go um yeah there you go that, that these are my, my initial thoughts on this uh on this subject you know there's a reason why everybody wants a rolex because people don't really want to have to worry in general about their watches they want to have further expenses you know changing the the strap uh, having a frequent service uh, people just don't want to avoid the uh, issues and they want to know that their money is kind of is safe you know most people don't buy watches to really invest but uh, at the same time if you can enjoy your watch for free uh, it's uh, it's always great so these are these are my thoughts on the on the subject share yours in the in the comments and uh, i hope i provided some uh, some sort of answer uh, to to our friend here all right guys Speak to you in the next one. Bye-bye.